getting shorter and shorter and darkness fills the night. Outside, you look at the trees and they're all bare. There's no life. Even the leaves have either blown away or been carted off somewhere. The earth appears to be dead. And soon, it will be covered with a blanket of snow. And it will seem as if the earth is held in the grip of death itself. But late last fall, after the harvest was in, there are some farmers who went out and they sowed what's called winter wheat in their fields. And what happened was, is when the seed was planted in those last nice days of autumn, they began to germinate under the soil. They sent down roots and they were prepared to grow. And when the winter set in, they just waited. But under the ground, even though it seems to be that everything is dead, there's life happening. And that's an important lesson that nature teaches us. It's one that certainly was taught to the people of ancient Israel, our Jewish ancestors. They were in Babylon. They were languishing in exile. Their temple had been destroyed. It seemed as if even God had been conquered. And they were as good as slaves, not much better. They languished there, and they thought of the days when there was joy and happiness, and their lives were filled with sorrow. They were depressed and overwhelmed with grief. It was a very dark time in their life. And it was to them that the prophet Isaiah went. Comfort, he said. Comfort. Speak comfort to my people. Speak tenderly to them and tell them it's almost over. That is, this will come to an end and I will bring you back to the land and settle you there once more. And the promise was already there. Even though they couldn't see it, even though they didn't understand what was happening, like the winter wheat under the soil in the winter, life was ready to spring forth as soon as the sun would melt the snow. Life was going to spring forth because there arose in the west, in the kingdom of Persia, a great leader, the emperor, who would conquer the Babylonians and set all the captives free and even help them to go back and rebuild their city and rebuild their temple. And so Isaiah says, make an expressway in the desert for him. Make it easy for him to come. Let him come and do what God wants. Go up on the mountain and look. Announce this good news. And the people said, well, what's coming? Isaiah didn't tell them. He just said, have hope. It's okay. God is taking care of us. Even though we don't realize it, even though we don't see it, God is taking care of us. It was a message that was proclaimed by John the Baptizer 500 years later. He spoke to a people whose kingdom had been taken over by the Romans. And while their temple still stood, it was the Romans who had authority over the high priesthood. It was the Romans who had authority over everything. Their freedoms were taken away, and it seemed so dark, so depressing. This isn't what they thought they were going to be living at this point in their life. Kind of like now, when you and I have to live with masks and keeping our distance from one another. You know, when it seems as if Death is there literally and figuratively. It surrounds us. They felt that same way 2,000 years ago. And it was to them that John the baptizer comes. John, this crazy prophet, the last of the old, the first of the New Testament, he comes and he, he's kind of a wild man. I mean, his hair is kind of all over the place. And, you know, he eats bugs and honey. You know, I'm sure all of us at some point or other have eaten a bug, not because we intended to, but it just kind of flew into our mouth or whatever. But in any case, no, 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 he did it on purpose. That was his diet. A little strange. And then he wore camel's hair, which 
was fine, except I'm sure it still smelled like a camel. And people kept coming out to him in droves because he was like that voice of Isaiah. Comfort, speak comfort to my people, says the Lord. It's about to end. Everything will change. God is doing something. Even though you don't see it, even though you don't realize it at this moment, God is at work in the world, and a Savior will come. And I'm not even worthy to untie the sandals of his feet. He's coming. He's coming with great power, this promised one of God. It is a message that I think is still important for us today, especially in these times that tend to be dark, literally and figuratively. God is doing something. God is working in our world even now, and there is reason for hope. I learned that not from the scriptures so much, but from my own parents and my older sister. When I was growing up, you know, my parents would have little sayings that they would use along the way. And one of them was, it's okay, God will take care of us. It's okay, God will take care of us. And I always thought it was just a cliche. It was just a, a nice thing that they said, you know, kind of something that you say when things are bad to kind of perk you up a little bit. But I realized over the years that it wasn't a cliche for them. Oh, they said it rather glibly because it was something that they had truly come to believe. My parents were married for 52 years, and during that 52 years, they buried three full-term infants, three of their seven children they buried as infants. They went through financial difficulties that I remember quite well. You know, we cut back and cut back to just get by. And it put a lot of stress and strain on our life as a family. But again and again, my parents would say, it's okay, God will take care of us. Even though we don't see how, even though we don't see where that's coming from, God will take care of us. My older sister, Lynn, died of cancer in 1993. She went through 18 months of dealing with the cancer. It caused her great pain. And of the 18 months, she spent eight of them in the hospital. And you know, along the way, even though things were difficult, she would say, it's okay, God will take care of me. It's okay, God will take care of me. And I heard my parents' voice in that again and again. And I came to realize that this wasn't something that was a cliche, just to make me feel better at the moment. It was something that came from a faith deep within, a hope that is ours. And that's what we celebrate today, my sisters and brothers. On the second Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the hope that is given to us by God. Even though the world around us is caught in the grip of death, it's okay. God will take care of us. Even though things are difficult, it's okay. God will take care of us. Even though I don't see it at this moment, it's okay. God will take care of us. It is something I understand and believe. It is perhaps the one thing that this Advent that we need to hear most of all. It's okay. God will take care of us. I don't know how. I don't know when all of this. I don't know how it will unfold. But God will take care of us. That's the promise. The promise of Advent. As we wait for the coming, even though it may seem like it's a delay, St. Peter says, don't worry, you know, it's in God's time, not yours. But God is doing something. It's okay. God will take care of us.